Galveston County's Jessica Anderson loves to stay active. Rock climbing, kayaking, biking, running. The 28 year old is an exercise physiologist by trade. She's even run a marathon, but come May 5th. I'm running 138 miles in Utah. You heard right, 138 miles in five days, or the equivalent of five marathons. I know after running 26.2 one time that uh, the next day my legs felt like jello, so to go back and back to back to back sounds like a lot, I know. <laughs> it's called the MS Run the U.S. Cross Country Relay from Los Angeles to New York, raising awareness about multiple sclerosis, a debilitating disease that affects 400,000 Americans. I I have MS myself. It really kind of broke me down when I heard the words that I had MS and I kind of felt defeated at that point in my life. Diagnosed with MS six years ago when she was just 22 years old, Jessica didn't tell very many people at the time she didn't want to be labeled as the girl with MS. It wasn't until a couple of months ago because of this relay that she went public for the first time because she saw a chance to make a difference. I didn't want MS to be what defined me. Like I, I wanted to define myself. Jessica's symptoms, sensitivity to heat, burning sensations, numbness in her limbs are lessened with daily activity, a good diet and vitamin supplements. Just because someone told me I have something doesn't mean it's going to stop me. She hopes her resilience will resonate with anybody trying to overcome any obstacle in life. People do get down. They feel like they can't do anything. So I want people to see that, you know, it, it doesn't have to stop you. And, you know, you just got to keep fighting it and fighting it. It's a fight that so far she's winning. Chris Stipes, Fox 26 News. Don Melinda, this has been an overwhelmingly emotional story, an emotional day, just to see the way that this Dickinson community, this neighborhood has rallied around this little girl has been truly inspiring. <laughs> Lining up outside Claire Langford's Dickinson house and winding through the streets of her neighborhood. It is an absolute dream. Hundreds of people who mostly don't even know the five-year-old. Anytime someone is in need, this community comes together. But love and support her all the same. She deserves it. If anyone deserves it, she does. Little Claire has terminal cancer, but still has dreams of being a princess. She's a girl. That's why she loves princesses. Glitter and fancy dresses and fancy hair. On this day, she became one. A complete and total surprise, joining the likes of Belle, Cinderella, and Snow White. What do you think about all these princesses for you? I like it. You like it? And picking her up at their front door, the only Prince Charming she's ever known, her dad. Well, you take one day at a time and you remain thankful for each day that you have, and that's my advice to anyone is, um, be thankful for your family members because life can change in a heartbeat. What was your reaction when you opened your door and you saw your daddy, your Prince Charming there? I, his name is actually Daddy. <laughs> his name is actually Dad. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> Their horse-drawn carriage circled the subdivision over and over again to the cheers and smiles of so many new friends people who took the time to care. People know my child's name and they know her story and they know her face and her smile and her spirit. And that is the blessing through all of this is that people know who my child is, who's a loving, caring person. Well, there are hundreds and hundreds of people here and they're all here for you. What would you want to say to them? I really like them. You really like them? Claire doesn't have much time left. After getting a clean bill of health last summer, just last month, doctors found five tumors on her lungs and lymph nodes. That's why the family friends who organized this princess parade had to act fast. It makes me sad. I was thinking today I wanted to take her to Disney on ice, and um, that's in April, so might not be, might not be here. There we go. But she's here right now on this magical day when a beautiful girl named Claire Langford brought out the best in so many. She was always happy and she was always thankful. And if that little girl can have that spirit, then we can all be happy and thankful and grateful for everything we have.
Do you want to do step ups? No. It wasn't long ago, 17 year old Ruby Gomez couldn't even do this. She couldn't do much of anything. I would always want to be in my room, my bed, tired, depressed. Ruby was diagnosed with a complex congenital heart defect as a baby that also damaged her lungs. At first I was confused, but over the years I started understanding. Understanding the battle ahead was going to be hard. Ruby was born in 96. I had a miscarriage in 93. And it was like, why is this happening to me? You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I had just lost a baby. And now this happening to her. For 16 years, Ruby took medication and had several surgical procedures at Texas Children's Hospital. She had to stop going to school in the eighth grade and late last year, her condition got worse. Ruby was exhausted. Her life was at stake. Dr. George Mallory has been Ruby's doctor for a decade and knew she needed a rare heart double lung transplant. She would have died. Uh, I can't tell you exactly when. I think there was a pretty good uh, chance it would be in the next year. Making things tougher, there's not a heart lung transplant list. Only 29 were performed in the US last year. You have to get to the top of both lists before you can get surgery. When they asked her for if she wanted the transplant, I was in for it, you know, because I was scared. And she showed me, she said she was ready. I wanted a transplant. Why? Because I wanted to be like the other kids. Finally, just last month, after more than a year of waiting, Ruby got her new heart and lungs. I was surprised. I was like, they actually called. Because <laughs> I was waiting for a long time. Her doctors say the road ahead is uncertain, but she's getting stronger every day. I want her to dream. Dream and live for today. Believe in God. Have faith. We all need it, but not all of us have access to clean water. This is the type of water that they actually pick up out of the ground and they drink. They give it to their one month year old, they give it to their one year old. And, um, you know, unfortunately, people die from this. Krish Hematronka is bringing awareness to the issue by taking matters into his own body. By drinking this water, I'm not only able to visualize the crisis, I'm able to taste the crisis. How many hours do you think um, some women and children have to walk to collect water in developing countries? Is 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, two hours. Or, th or three hours? How about two? Two, the answer is three. <laughs> three, it's okay, I'll take a sip for you anyways. Watching him drink the stuff caught the attention of many people at Memorial Park, and that's the point it forced people to learn about the issue. Spending his weekends raising awareness, he dedicates the rest of his time to his job. I made a ring company called Doa More Rings, and every time we sell a ring, we give two people in a developing country clean water for life. Now is the time more than ever to be cautious about how much water we're using, because it's really the most valuable resource we have when you think about it, clean drinking water. Up until 48 hours ago, Stephen Kentu had an important job in the Coast Guard, but he wasn't doing what he dreamed of doing, flying in helicopters and saving lives. You're saving someone's life, and I think really the only greater thing than that is to give your life to save a life. Which, as it turns out, is exactly what Kentu did in his first 24 hours as a flight mechanic, a new job he just started on Thursday. One of the watch standards woke us up and said we're getting sent out on a medevac about 100 miles offshore. A frightening thought for a rookie flight mechanic, but Cantu, a petty officer third class, has been in the Coast Guard for five years, so he knew his training would kick in. It was just following step by step what I've been taught from the beginning. And it worked three times. That's right, in his first day, he helped save three people. Just this morning, he hoisted a passenger who was having a medical emergency from a boat in the Gulf. So he packed up our gear and went out and lowered the rescue swimmer down, and he assessed him real quick, and we just picked him up, took him to the hospital in Galveston, 
It was just a routine thing. It was new for me. Not a bad second day on the job. I'd love to tell you that I was surprised, but it, that seems to be the way it works is you're always kind of hoping for the new guy. For some reason, that's when SAR happens and search and rescue happens. And Stephen Cantu hopes to have many more rescues just like this one. I'm photojournalist David Navarez.